Hey everybody, Mike Barron's here, RC Soaring Diaries. Welcome to another episode. Man, it is springtime, 2020. The world is in a really bizarre state. We're right in the middle of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Actually, we're a couple months in now and uh, we're starting to see people venturing outside, that kind of thing. Uh, our flying season has started here. We live in Canada, or I live in Canada, and it gets really cold over the winter, and we really look forward to our flying season, and it has started. So we've been out flying, but today is really miserable out. So I thought I'd do an episode on fixing airplanes after they break. Sometimes you look at some of these crashes and go, wow, there's no way I could possibly fix that. Well, Today I've been looking at a wing for an IBIS, which is something that I kind of did a little video on last year, um, at the end of last year. Before winter, we got invited out to a really awesome slope soaring site uh, by a guy named Art. And he took us out to his family's land. They own a farm and they have this beautiful Lone Tree Hill. And we'll do a video from that hill one day here really, really soon. But unfortunately, we had a mid-air collision. Uh, just at the end of the day, and I took out the wing of the Ibis. The Ibis made by Art Hobby, and I got taken out by a guy named Art. Go figure. Coincidence. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be looking at this over the next uh, week or two, trying to figure this out, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing fixed up, up and running and flying. I'll show you some of the details. I'll show you how I did some of the repairs. This is a veneered wooden wing. And it uh, looks pretty splintered up and looks really bad, but we're going to give it a shot and see what goes on. Hope you like this episode. So here is the wing of the Ibis. As you can see, we took out part of the front of this. It's all splintered. You can see all the splinters down in this area here. It's all cracked. Um, part of the leading edge is gone. I know it's all foam. Uh, this is all splintered and this is broken too. Uh, I've taken the aileron off, or the flap off, sorry, to uh, do these repairs. Uh, my strategy here is to kind of fix up some of this stuff and take some glass cloth, 1.4 ounce glass cloth, and do a section on each wing to cover the repair and strengthen it and uh, then paint that to make it look like it's all part of the airplane. Hopefully nobody will ever be able to tell. Uh, this looks bad, but as you can see, if I push on this, the spar, the main spar and the connector inside of the ring is still intact. Everything is just this uh, veneer and foam, and foam. I'm gonna uh, mix up some glue and figure out a couple of things, ways of clamping this and holding this down uh, to get that glued together and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so upon further inspection of all these pieces, um, I found this right here. See that it's all delaminated? There's nothing but uh, veneer and foam there, so I have to adhere all this back first before I do anything. Uh, the glue I'm gonna use is uh, some trusty Gorilla Glue, some polyurethane glue. This is the clear formula, so it dries clear. Um, the one interesting thing about polyurethane glues is that um, you need to take it and add a little bit of water to it. And what it does is it foams up, and I thought that was this was an ideal glue for the situation, just because that way we can uh, get in here and you can see uh, there's some little foam chunks missing and that kind of stuff. That polyurethane glue, and I know this from building EPP planes, it's going to uh, expand and foam up and it's going to fill all those little voids. You're probably going to have some leakage coming through here, but the nice thing about the polyurethane glue, it's, uh, it's almost like a foam when it dries and you can just cut it with a knife and sand it. So uh, hopefully that should work out well. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. All right, I was able to prop these pieces of veneer up and you can see all the foam is all beat up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of this Gorilla Glue, uh, wipe it off in there. I have my trusty uh, popsicle stick. I'm just gonna get in here and really kind of move it around. And uh, I'm actually gonna coat both surfaces, the top and the bottom, uh, and then just spray with a little bit of water. And then I'm gonna clamp it all together with a little bit of wax paper in between the clamps and the veneer uh, so things don't stick together. Let that clamp up and see how that works for me. I'm pretty sure it'll work just fine. 
So here we go. Everything's clamped up with some wax paper. Uh, you can actually start to see some of the uh, glue ooze out. It's turning into foam already right here and right here. Uh, you can also see that starting to happen here. I put some glue in this crack and uh, hopefully it'll get in there, especially in this spot here. Hopefully it'll foam up. Uh, it just started foaming up, but that's what this glue does. Polyurethane glue, add some water, you get some foam, it just fills all your voids. I thought it'd be the best choice for this situation. We'll let that set up and clean that up and move on to the next step. So here's a little trick. Um, as you can see, we have a bunch of foaming going on here from the Gorilla Glue that we added the water to. We sprayed some water on there. And uh, as you can see, it comes up. Now, it's only been about maybe 40 minutes or so since I've done that. And this glue is foamed up. It's fairly hard. You can see it's filled that area. Um, but it's still kind of green. Green being it's not totally hardened. It's still pretty soft. It's kind of foamy. This is the best time to get rid of a lot of this because it's not really hard. Um, it's not tacky, it doesn't stick to you, it's just hard enough. So what you do is just take a razor blade, be very very careful because you don't have any kind of guards, and just take it along and cut off, just hold it at a very very shallow angle, and you can cut off most of the foam as you can see. It's kind of hard to get on this angle with filming this, but a lot easier when I'm not worrying about the camera. But there you go. Let's see if I can get it out of this way to give you a better view of what's going to happen here. There we go. You see it just kind of comes right off. Just like that. It just saves you a bunch of sanding a little later. It's easier to get off now before it's fully hardened than later. Just a little tip for you if you're working with this stuff. All right, so there we go. Uh, we took the clamps off and cleaned up some of the glue. Don't mind my shadows for my hands. I'm just holding everything by hand here. Um, it's way better already. This isn't that bad. It's fairly smooth in here. There's some problems, but I am going to give this a skim of epoxy and micro balloons. Really heavy on the micro balloons. Uh, later as a filler to fill all this stuff up, we're going to give this a, a nice sand. Uh, we're going to start working on the other side here. We have a big delamination problem in here. You can see there's, uh, there's a big gap in there. There's foam coming apart, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to inject a bit of the polyurethane in there. Uh, as deep as I can, and uh, make it wet, let it foam up, clamp it, and uh, that'll fix that part up. Let's see how that goes. So there we go. We have done the top surface now. Uh, we have it all clamped together with some wax paper using the polyurethane glue, the Gorilla Glue once again, uh, the stuff you add water to. And I want you to take a look right here because you can even see the Gorilla Glue is starting to foam up out of the foam itself. There was some shattered foam in there and beads, and by putting the glue in there and adding some water, it foams up and expands and fills all those gaps and voids uh, of the missing beads and all that kind of stuff. So you have really good adhesion here. So that is that. The whole purpose behind this is just to get a smooth surface so I can fiberglass this later. Once we have this dry, I'll take off the clamps and everything, and we'll take a look at that and figure out how we're going to fix up the missing leading edge. So here's the top surface with the clamps off. As you can see, I did a little bit of sanding here. I sanded some of it down, and uh, the surface isn't too bad. You can see it's filled a lot of these gaps. There's a few little areas that I'll have to do a little bit of filling on. I'm going to use a mixture of micro balloons and epoxy. Really heavy on the micro balloons, so it's really light and sands easy. It's a great filler. Sands really nice. Um, you can see here on the leading edge, this these blobs. This is all the glue that came out and as you can see there it is that's the glue that came out of here it's foam it's light it's uh, very similar to the foam that we have inside of here uh, the main objective behind that was to replace some of those crushed beads and let it seep into the foam a little bit give it its rigidity back I am going to be cutting some of this out in about here and replacing that with a whole new section which will do soon Anyways, that's where we are so far, and uh, 
I have to figure out how we're going to do the rest of this. Well, it is the end of day one of the repair, and uh, I've just spent a few hours on here. Really, I haven't spent much time. I took everything off the top. As you can see, I sanded a little bit in this area, and um, everything in here is repaired. It's actually not too bad, not too bad. I'm going to have to do a little bit of filling on here to smooth it out, but it should be just fine. And you can see where the glue came through. Just got a good view of that. This is all that polyurethane glue that I put inside of there. Uh, hit it with the water and it all foamed up. So that replaced some of the broken beads and that kind of stuff in there. I am going to be cutting some of this out and replacing it. This whole leading edge piece is going to be replaced. Anyways, so uh, that's the first day. Polyurethane glue waited about an hour and a half between uh, applications. That's sitting not too bad. This is sitting not too bad. It's definitely a big difference from where we started today, where it wasn't that rigid. And I'm getting a lot of the rigidity back. Uh, once I put the glass cloth on here, it's going to be rock solid. It's going to be awesome. That's it for the first night, just to go to show you that it doesn't take much effort to fix some of this stuff. Hey, day two here. We're back in the garage. Uh, the sun's coming in the window, which is kind of nice considering yesterday was really uh, gloomy and gross. <laughs> um, overnight, the glue has dried really, really well. Um, it's only been 24 hours, actually. I went to work for a while today, and uh, I just got home. I marked off where I'm going to cut this out. This is the part I'm going to replace. I still have to mark the bottom, but uh, I'll be doing that in just a little bit, and uh, I'll show you how I'm going to make the insert that's going to go inside of here. So here we are, I've cut out that bad piece so I have a good edge to put an insert in there. Uh, you can see that there's a quite a big gap here, a big dent. I'm going to fill that a little later and I'll show you how I'm going to do that and what I'm going to fill that with. Uh, you also notice some, some stuff here that needs to be filled. But that's what I did, I just marked it off with some tape. I took a razor saw, threw it right here, let me just grab it so you can see which razor saw I used. I just grabbed a razor saw, uh, I made my cuts this way. And then I just uh, put a straight edge on here. Cut that with a razor blade. Uh, and that's it, just a razor knife. That's it. So as you can see, there's foam in here. My uh, thoughts now are to fill this with something. Um, I was thinking about a balsa block, but uh, that would probably add quite a bit of weight. So I'm actually gonna make a piece of a wing to fit in here with a foam core. Uh, it's not gonna have a uh, Obichi veneer or popular veneer skin like this. I'm going to use some balsa to sheet my little wing section and I'll show you how I'm going to do that um, in just a bit. Hey, so we got to come up with a way of filling that gap, of filling that leading edge. So I've come up with a way of doing that and uh, what you see behind me is a automated foam cutter. It's a CNC foam cutter. Um, this is just a prototype table that I made to make sure everything works. Uh, I put this together so I can manufacture some EPP uh, slope gliders, which we're going to have out in uh, the near future here. But this is just a test bed, uh, and while it was out, I thought, man, why don't I just, you know, make a actual piece of a wing that I could stick inside of there. That way the weight doesn't change that much. Uh, the wing still has the same kind of density and we'll have a foam core just like before. The only difference is, is that I'm going to use some balsa to uh, sheet the wing. Uh, and then I'll cut it down, stick it in the insert, and then we'll smooth everything out. Uh, throw some light 3 quarter ounce glass cloth on there and uh, we should be good to go. I'll show you a little bit of video of uh, this hot wire cutting this foam. It's pretty cool. So here we are. Uh, I'm running the CNC. You'll probably hear it in the background here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it kind of makes a lot of funny noises, but let me show you the machine that's cutting uh, our foam wing for us right now. As we run in here, you can see that I have a motor that's turning a gantry that's sliding along. Like I said, this right now is set up as a prototype. Kind of messy in the garage. But you can see all these motors and uh, you'll see a hot wire and that hot wire is slowly cutting through the foam. It's cutting the exact airfoil shape that we need. And if you look over here, this is my laptop, and uh, there we go. That's Mach 3 running, and if you take a good look here, you can see whereabouts it is on the cut so far. We'll be cutting a whole bunch of wings on this machine very, very soon for some EPP slope planes 
available from MB Aero Works very soon. So this hot wire has finished cutting. It's just kind of sitting here now. Uh, that's the hot wire that cuts through all of this stuff. Let's take the weights off and let's just see what we have. If I pull that off, I'm left with this. You can see the wing profile. I'm going to open this up. And there we are. <clears throat> there we are. We have the wing all cut out. I'm not going to use the trailing edge or anything, but I am going to use this, this leading edge. Uh, nice crisp leading edge or nice crisp airfoil on here. We're going to sheet this with some 1 16th balsa and add a leading edge to it. Cut the piece out and uh, put it in place. Um, I did find out that the airfoil is a Sealing Donovan 7080 and SD7080 that they've modified. So what I've done is uh, I've used the Sealing Donovan uh, 7080 airfoil in my uh, software to make all of this happen. So it's time to start sheeting. Let's see how that goes. So what I did was, was I took a piece of that foam, about one inch of it, and uh, cut off the end, and just went and placed it on here to make sure that it's going to fit right. And by all appearances, it looks like it's going to fit right. Once I put that 1 16th balsa on there, we should be good. The reason I'm using 1 16th is uh, I actually made all the files, so it's going to be a little thicker than it's supposed to be. That way I can put it in, use a flat sanding bar, and uh, sand everything down so it matches egg. Exactly. So let's move on to actually sheeting this foam. All right, so here we go. I have uh, a couple of pieces of balsa here that we're going to sandwich into our wing skins and wing cord. I'm just going to put those off to the side for a bit. Um, I just made a little kind of scraper squeegee out of some balsa wood. Uh, I have a spray bottle that I'll need in a bit. A little bit of water. Don't need that. And I also need... This, this is uh, Gorilla Glue, it's a polyurethane glue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here, uh, I'm gonna get it as thin as possible, I'm gonna really scrape it, and then I'm gonna wet the foam core, place this on the foam core, and then put it in between some weights, and let that sit, um, and that should work. I haven't tried this technique before, but I have a number of friends of mine that have, they told me nothing but great things, so they use them on this technique on big gassers, I'm used to doing this with epoxy, but I'm going to give this a shot. What the heck? So here we go, I'm going to throw a little bit of glue on here. Now I'm going to scrape this around on each one of these pieces. So I'm just going to get some glue on here. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use, but any excess I will be able to get rid of later. So the whole idea here is to scrape this. I just made a scraper out of balsa wood. I'm not sure how this is going to work and how much it's going to take, but you don't want to use too much. I guess that's the key to this, because if you use too much, it foams up so bad that it actually pushes your pieces apart. So let's see if I can get this scraped around. Sometimes you can use a credit card. Uh, sometimes I use playing cards. There's lots of ways of doing this, but I'm just going to find my dry spots here. I'm just looking in the light to see what I can find. And like I said, this is all new to me. So bear with me. I just want to make sure I get all the spots. There we go. I'll give that another scrape. See how that goes. Move everything around. Now I don't really have to worry about the ends because they're going to be sticking off. And I did that on purpose so I don't get the stuff all over my hands. Because this stuff is goopy. I know that from past experience, it takes days to come off your hands. And unfortunately, because of COVID, it's kind of hard to get rubber gloves, so I ran out. But there we go, so we'll leave that like that. Looks pretty wet to me all over. There we go. I don't know what the time window is for this stuff. So you just have to bear with me. Sorry for the paint uh, here. I just had to come up with a piece of plywood, put it on a little stand so I can show you guys this. Um, I have another piece here that I'll use in a bit. I need the core. So I'm just gonna throw down the bottom bed. Just like so. Here's the core that's gonna go in the middle. This is gonna go on here like this. I'm gonna stick it off and the hair. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spray 
some water on the cork and that should activate everything. So if I lay that on there, I know I gotta be about there. How's that look? Looks pretty good to me. Now I'm just using a small piece of balsa because I really don't need the entire thing. Because I'm only going to be using a small section of it. But in order to make things proper, I measured the wing and measured the cord to make all this the right size. So that's lined up. And this side here is lined up. Now I have a board right here that I'm going to place on top to hold everything flat. As you can see, it's another scrap piece of wood. Use it for glue and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it doesn't look very professional, but it is definitely going to do the trick. So I'm going to throw these weights on here. I'm going to get them nice and forward like this and the more weight the better there we go so I think that's gonna be okay and I think that's gonna be okay now it's just a matter of letting this cure up and see what it looks like there's a side view of the work we've just done so it's all sitting here it's all being pressed down and uh, we will see how all this works out. So I decided to change things up a little bit. I threw some clamps on here too, just to be on the safe side. So we're gonna let this sit for quite a number of hours, probably till tomorrow, and uh, we'll take a look at what we have. Hey, so it is day three of the rebuild of the Ibis um, cell plane, electric cell plane. Uh, yesterday, or last night, I put together a foam wing that you saw, or at least a partial foam wing, and here it is. Ta-da! Look at that. There it is. It's held together with some, um, with some Gorilla Glue, as you saw, and uh, I took all the extra, trimmed it off. So I have a piece that I'm going to put right inside of here. There it is. You can see that I put some filler on here. Um, I've been filling some areas with some model magic filler. Hopefully uh, you guys can see that. I'm trying to do this blind in my viewer. There we go. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down. I'm going to cut it down so it fits right in there. I kind of designed it so it sits about there. I'll put, the, uh, I'll put that in and then put a leading edge on there uh, made out of uh, balsa or spruce. I'm not sure yet. And uh, we will put that all together, see how it goes. So there we are. We have a piece that uh, fits inside of here. And uh, that's not quite in the right spot. But Anyways, I'm going to glue all this in here with, a, um, with Gorilla Glue. And uh, some of the little gaps in here uh, are going to get filled up. There's going to be a bit oozing out, which we're going to sand off later. We have to fill some of these areas anyways. So what I did was I used a sanding block. I love these uh, these great planes, these T-bar sanders. Uh, they work extremely well. Nice long block, so all of these uh, sanding lines in here are straight. And as you can see, there's the insert. That's it. Uh, I have a leading edge going on the front. A quarter inch one. I'm going to put that on after I put it on here though and then sand that to the contour of the existing leading edge. And then... Uh, we just have some filling to do, some smoothing to do, and then it's time to fiberglass. I'm going to glue this in here and uh, let that cure and get back to it a little later, in probably a couple hours. There we are, a little bit of tape in place, and uh, let this cure. Later on, a little bit of sanding and a leading edge. Well, there we go. The tape is off. Uh, as you can see, it's all filled in, and I put a leading edge in here. I just used quarter inch balsa because I'm going to be uh, fiberglassing this so that's going to add a bunch of strength to the leading edge right here. So I didn't think I was going to go with a hardwood. It's just going to be a lot easier to sand and shape this way. Uh, if I went with a spruce 
like what uh, is in this part here, it'd be pretty hard to sand afterwards. So I just went for uh, simplicity and uh, the ease of shaping. Um, we're going to sand this to shape using a sanding bar and probably a razor plane to get it down just so you can see what we're looking at here. That's how much I have sticking up. Now I did sheet this in 1 16th balsa and I made it a little big on purpose actually. Just a little big. That way I have something to sand. If I just made it perfect with like 1 32nd balsa let's say and I made it exactly the right shape um, the chances are it being off would have been pretty high. So this way I have a little bit of meat to sand away uh, in between uh, the foam there, so the wood and then the foam in the middle. So I have a little bit of wood to sand away so I can shape this and I think we're going to get started on that right away. Well, a little bit of sanding and as you can see we ended up getting all this done. There we go. Take a look at that. There's the new leading edge. You can see some gaps and stuff. Some places need to be filled that kind of thing, a little tweak there, but uh, a little bit of filler. You can see where the veneer itself, the Obichi veneer, is a little dented there. Um, but we're going to mix up some epoxy and micro balloons. Really, really heavy on the micro balloons, so it's just a really thick paste. It's a great filler for this kind of stuff. So I'm going to be filling all these areas, uh, letting that cure overnight, and then giving it a sand tomorrow. Hopefully uh, we'll only have to do that a couple times and then we can fiberglass this. Alright, so here we are. We have taken this wing and uh, done a bunch of uh, like bondo on it or bogs as they say in Australia. Um, it is a mixture of epoxy and micro balloons. It's an epoxy that I have. It's a finishing resin that uh, I use for vacuum bagging, that kind of thing. Uh, mixed it with micro balloons, a lot of micro balloons. This is supposed to be a filler. It's not supposed to uh, weigh much. It's supposed to sand very easily. So very heavy on the micro balloons um, to the consistency of like thick peanut butter. Then I put that on there. It should cure by the morning. Let me just look at the other side here. There's the top side. As you can see, we we filled all our little spots. So. Hopefully we'll sand that tomorrow. We'll probably see a few deviations and have to fill those and uh, then we are ready to do some fiberglassing. So that's it for day three. Day four is tomorrow. Well, here's how things are looking. I did all that filling that you saw and uh, did some sanding this morning. Had a little bit of breakfast came out here before I have to go to work and what I did was I just did a bunch of sanding there's still a couple little things now this may look messed up but it's pretty darn smooth little little thing right there that we have to sort out um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill a bit of this again before I go to work and uh, tonight I'm hoping that I can sand it down and uh, get everything prepped for a little bit of glassing. I'm starting to look in this and realize how strong all this ended up. And I was going to paint all this, but I'm starting to lean toward just putting some covering on here. Um, all this filler and everything, it's all epoxy based and it really has strength in this whole area up. And I don't really know if I really need to fiberglass all this. Uh, I'm going to think about it today while I'm doing everything, I think a painted finish would look nicer. Um, so I think the extra effort might be worth it. So I might go that route or I might just uh, wimp out and uh, smooth everything out and throw some covering on here in a nice kind of scenic, not scenic, that's the wrong word, in a nice kind of graphic design with some flowing lines or something. I was going to do all this in white because uh, the tips of this are actually uh, red. There's some red on the tips already, and uh, I was going to change this up and get a bit more red on the bottom. I'm finding this hard to see at altitude, so I might uh, do the same on some of the rest of the wing while I'm doing all this and make this thing look all pretty. All right, I'm off to work. We'll check in again uh, once, I put some, once I put some filler on here and uh, give it another scent.
We are on day five and I'm just uh, getting some fiberglass ready to put on the center section. Uh, I'm just waiting for a few things to dry, but what I'm going to show you is a little tip. I took some um, fiberglass and some wax paper. I took some wax paper and I sprayed it with uh, spray 77 right here. This is the glue. Super 77, spray 77 glue. Just lightly sprayed the um, wax paper and I laid fiberglass on it. So this is 1.4 ounce glass cloth that I'm going to be using on the center section. Um, basically what I've done is I've taken the glass cloth and I've made it so it's manageable. The problem is when you cut fiberglass, all these little fray little things start coming off and start causing a problem, uh, especially when you're using epoxy resin. It uh, starts pulling and, and you get all these little little tufts and things get messy. This is basically a gigantic sticker now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually spray a bit of the, uh, the glue. Once again, that spray 77, 3M spray 77. I'm going to spray it lightly on the wing where I want this. And I'm going to lay it down and then I'm going to peel the back of the wax paper off. Uh, so you'll see that application in just a bit. Uh, a lot of people ask, well, if you have spray glue there, how is it going to adhere? Well, the epoxy itself actually dilutes and thins out the glue. So the glue dissolves and goes away. At least the spray 77 does and leaves the resin behind. Um, you can't do this with uh, any kind of water-based polycrylic or anything like that because um, it won't actually penetrate that spray 77 glue. But just a little tip, uh, I'm going to cut this down and show you kind of that process and how we're going to apply this fiberglass. All right, so here we have our wing. Um, I've done all the filling and everything here on it, just like so, as you can see, nice and smooth. There's the new piece we put in. You can see it's looking pretty darn good. Uh, and here is my sticker. So let me grab it for you here. This is the fiberglass and on one side, and then the other side is... Uh, the other side is the uh, wax paper. So like I said, we made a sticker. Not sure what that is right there. Not too worried about it though. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this. Use some spray glue, we're gonna put it in place. Uh, and fiberglass it in place, and that's it. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'll set up the tripod and see if I can make this uh, work for you guys. So here we are, I have uh, got everything here ready. Uh, some masking tape here for when I put the resin on so it doesn't uh, go too far, doesn't get on all of our uh, push rods and covers and yada yada, so on and so forth. Um, as you can see, I've sanded all this down. It looks really, really good. It feels good, looks good. Um, I've also sanded this side of the wing. I'm gonna do both sides. Um, I'm using 1.4 ounce cloth on the bottom just to make sure that this center section is nice and solid uh, with positive G loads. Um, I was going to go to three quarter ounce cloth just to finish this off and get it ready for paint, but I thought uh, I had some 1.4, I'll put that on here. And uh, the weight difference is going to be pretty darn small. Uh, that's 1.4 ounces per square yard. And you can see that this is just a fraction of that. Usually you use 1.4 ounce uh, cloth would use about 1.4 ounces of resin per every square yard. So you gain 2.8 ounces. So you can see that the, the weight that we're actually going to uh, gain from doing all of this stuff is very small. It's only going to be an ounce or two really when it's all said and done, if that. Um, so what I did was I made my sticker. I have it over here. There it is. It is my sticker that I'm going to be placing on here. I'm just going to spray a little bit of spray 77 on there. I don't have everything on camera, sorry, but uh, it's just a light, light mist. That's all you want. You're not dousing this, it's just a light mist so it will stick. And here it is. Now all I have to do is line this up. I have it about an eighth of an inch shy on each side. And you can move it around a little bit. So let's just see how we're looking here. And so that's pretty darn 
pretty darn good. Here we go. It's in place. You can see I messed up on my cutout here. It's not a problem because it's not going to be seen. And I'm just going to smooth all of this out, just like this. And by smoothing all this out, sticking it down, we're going to get good adhesion. Around here is always going to be a little difficult because uh, of the dihedral, but I think we'll be able to make that work. So basically what we're doing is we're just taking all this and sticking it down so we have a manageable piece of cloth. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There we go. So now the fun part is taking taking the wax paper off. It's sometimes a bit of a pain, but we should be able to do it. Maybe I'll try this side here. <clears throat> All right, there we go. I did get it started. Took a bit, but there we are. So now, I can pull this off just like a sticker, as you can see. Yeah, just take your time, be gentle. Get it coming up there. There we go. Let's work that over. As you're going along, if you see any little, little areas, just press those down. Just like that, smooth them out. A little bit of wax paper not cooperating there on that side, so I'm probably going to start going from this side. boring part of all of this video. Just a little. There we go. Just work that out. Just going to burnish all this down to make sure it's down really well. Okay. Come from this side again. A bit of wax paper right here now that I'll have to take off, but it's not really a big deal. There we go. Probably didn't get much glue on some of these areas. Being in a bit of a rush for the video, but there we are. So we're just gonna let that hang. Make sure it's all stuck down. And all this overhang I'm gonna leave because uh That'll get trimmed off with some sandpaper later when we're all done. So there we are. There we are. So it's all in place. No ragged edges here. No ragged edges here. So we're just going to lay some resin on here, get this all done. Oh, I got one little piece of wax paper to get off. So let me mix up some resin, get a couple more things ready, and uh, turn the camera back on so you guys can see the next step. Okay, so I have mixed up some resin. And a really good thing to do with resin, and it's something somebody taught me a long, long time ago, is to mix it up and actually let it sit for about a minute or so, a couple minutes, just to let all that chemical reaction happen, let all those molecules lie next to each other and do what they're supposed to do. So I have this all mixed up, 
Um, you're going to need paper towels. You're going to need some sort of a scraper. Uh, this was a a um, a gift card. Um, that's no longer good. So you can use a credit card or anything like that because we're going to scrape all this epoxy. And we don't want to scrape it at a 45 degree angle. We want to scrape it along the weave, along the long threads so it doesn't shift. And what we're going to try and do is scrape as much as we can out and we're also going to soak up as much as we can with our paper towel. So we're not going to use a brush or anything. I have a brush on standby in case we've got to get into some places, but um, I'm just going to take this and just do a little bit more mixing just to make sure everything is working properly. Now, I normally wear gloves when I do this. I don't really have very many gloves left due to COVID. Every time we go out, we tend to wear them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dribble a bit of this on here, just like so. And it's probably too much, but we're going to soak up the extra. Um, this epoxy is a finishing resin. Uh, it's not like your normal 30-minute epoxy. It is thinner, as you can see. Uh, this stuff that I'm using is uh, made by a company called Silver Tip, and I get it from a local distributor. Um, and it seems to work really, really well. West Systems epoxies work. Um, and uh, there's finishing epoxies out there, too, that you can buy at the hobby shop. Uh, so I'm just going to start moving some of this stuff around. Like I said, some of it is just going to go onto uh, paper towels later. We're going to soak up as much of this as we can. But I do want to get this thoroughly through this glass cloth. And I'm going to be careful around this connector. And as you notice, I'm, I'm moving side to side. And you can move back and forth. Just as long as it's against those threads. <clears throat> you don't want to go to 45. And I'm going to get it all the way to the tape. That's why the tape is here, because I'm allowed to get epoxy there. Uh, and then we can feather those edges a little later. <clears throat> now, as you can see, I'm just scraping away. You can uh, see how it's wetting out. It's wetting out really, really well. That's uh, thanks to this resin. Like I said, it's pretty thin. I'm just going to be extra careful around the connector so I'm not getting a bunch of goopy resin all over the connector. There we go, looking good. Looking good. Move some of this stuff around. Get it to where it has to be. And one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to get too much around the edges because it tends to blob up. And we don't want that. So I'm going to just wet that out, and that's, I did bring a brush out, so I might take a brush in there, just a little bit more control, I'm not putting gigantic blobs everywhere. Let me work on all this stuff first. As you can see, it's getting down inside. If there's any dry spots like this, just make sure that you have enough resin in there. I have more in my little cup that I can take out if I need to. And we are going to scrape as much of this out of here as we can. But first, I'm going to get all these edges. I'm going to get all the way around this leading edge. And make sure I don't have any dry spots. Especially since this is a little stronger. Um, or part of the strength, I'm hoping. Uh, another thing I want you to notice is that I cut everything at an angle. Um, you don't want to do everything straight up and down. Uh, basically what that does is that causes the stresses, the stress riser, in between a soft spot and a hard spot, to be displaced and not directly um, perpendicular to the wing. Perpendicular, is that the right word I'm looking for right now? Yeah, you don't want to create stress risers. They're always bad. Everything breaks between a hard spot and a soft spot. So if you can displace that and disperse it, you're winning the battle. A lot of people say working with epoxy is pretty messy. Uh, doing stuff like this isn't messy at all. As you can see, I don't even have, I don't have any on my hands. 
or anything like that. Um, and as you can see, all the edges of this are being controlled because we stuck it in place beforehand. Like I said, I'm going to get a brush out for some of this. Um, there are a couple things that I'm going to do though. Uh, so I've got a paper towel out for. There we go. Just rest that there. Uh, I do have a blade. I'm going to grab. <clears throat> And I'm just going to cut a bit of a relief here. Yeah, just so that sits a little better. It just seems to be sitting a little funny. There we go. And right there. Good. And then I want to do one right here, too. Right on that. Right where the dihedro meets. Just a little bit of a relief cut. So everything sits proper. Okay, so I have lots of epoxy. I'm gonna get some of that over here into this area. I'll probably drop a bit more on. Just uh, use the popsicle stick, kind of get it in the areas that I want. Move it around. But like I said, we're gonna be soaking up quite a bit of this. I'm just trying to get it on everything right now. I wanna get the leading edges. I wanna get all the way around. I'd actually like it to to dip down uh, a little bit, but I don't want it to ooze and run. That's the last thing I want. Yeah, I don't want to get some in here. It doesn't seem to have enough in there. Good. Good. Let's uh, move a lot of this stuff around. Like I said, I'm trying to get a good coating here. Make sure I don't have any dry spots, because that's the last thing you want. Okay, that looks good. Once again, working at right angles, don't not doing 45s or anything like that, because that could cause lots of problems and headaches for you, because uh, it would pull this, the cloth out of shape, and that's the last thing you want to do. A couple little dry spots over here. Just in here. I'm just going to pull on that a little. Make sure it's down nice and tight. A couple little dry spots I'm seeing at the front, but I think we're almost, almost there. Look at that. Yeah, I didn't need that brush. Alright, tremendous. I'm just going to make sure this leading edge is done very well. No dry spots here. Little dry spot on the corner. And uh, careful around that connector. A little bit of dry spot right there. That's so okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape a lot of this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, once again, working at that. I don't know if the camera can see that, but it took off a bunch of creamy looking epoxy. That's what happens. It turns milky. You get this milky epoxy. And I just wipe that off. And I'm just going to keep scraping this. Because... All the extra epoxy does nothing but cause you a sanding headache later. It doesn't make anything stronger in any way, shape, or form. It actually, too much epoxy in fiberglass makes it weaker, to be honest. So I've been taught and told. So there we go. So just a matter of scraping all of this off. I'm going to scrape off as much as I can, and then I'm going to soak up even more with some paper towel. There we go. And as you can see, five glass is keeping in shape, staying in place. Not a mess, you don't have tons of big strands all over the place. I see a lot of guys at uh, fiberglass center sections of airplanes, and I was one of those guys at one point when I was younger until I learned some of these techniques. But a lot of them are, uh, there we go, 
yeah, a lot of them look pretty darn messy. And this is a really great way of doing it. Uh, just take that fiberglass tape down the center section, spray it with some spray glue, drop it in place, and uh, uh, you can work with it. So there we go. I've scraped off pretty much all I can. And I am going to scrape off even more. I'm going to take some paper towel and I'm going to lie this paper towel on top of here. Just like this. And I do have a roller, can't find it. But I normally take a roller to this and roll as much into this paper towel as I possibly can. And when I turn this paper towel over, you'll see how much of this epoxy came out. Hmm. So you did pretty good. It's not. It's still pretty dry. Sometimes you can see some big, big marks on it. Make sure I don't get that connector. Yep, we're okay. I just want to do this trailing edge, I didn't really get it. And that's it. That's it. There we go. Throw that in the garbage. We have our fiberglass cloth on here, and you can see it looks pretty darn good. I just don't want to move this around too much. There we go. You can also just block part of it if you see it not sitting the way you want. But that's it. That's it. Some people actually put little uh, clamps and stuff on there, on this leading edge, and uh, to pull it down a little bit better. I don't. Uh, I don't usually have too many problems. The light cloth lies down very nicely. Very nicely. So that's it. I'm gonna let this sit and cure. Um, it's around noon, I think, and uh, tonight, probably around 10 or 12. Or 10 or 11 o'clock at night, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down. I'm probably gonna do one more coat of resin on here. Normally you do three coats. So you have the, the fiberglass that goes down and then you're gonna see the weave of that fiberglass. So we can sand the edges and all that, but then after that we wanna put two more coats of resin on here. With a light sanding in between. I use about a, uh, like a 600 grit and just knock down everything. And then I just put another layer on, and I do it the same way. I just scrape it. I just scrape it. Let that cure, sand, and scrape it again. So this is the bottom side of the wing, which is 1.4 ounce cloth. Uh, we're gonna let this cure, and we'll see you guys in a bit. Well, it's around 9.30 at night, and all of this epoxy has hardened. Uh, it's been a busy, busy night out here in the garage. I've been working on lots of stuff. Um, also some powered stuff, just doing some decals. Did those earlier, it's just a disaster in here, but this is dry, or cured, and uh, I want to uh, do another layer of epoxy on here, uh, on this side, before I shut her down for the night. So we're gonna remove all this excess. And this is a little trick, uh, don't cut it off. Just take a sanding bar, sanding block, and uh, I want you to watch this. If I just run along this edge like this, that should come off with a really nice clean edge. Let's see if that worked. Almost. There we go, look at that. Came right off, nice and clean. You can see how clean that edge is. And all you have to do is go around the whole entire thing with your sanding block. And that should trim off all of the excess give you a really nice, nice edge, just like that. See? Comes right off, nice and clean. Um, uh, you do the same with the leading edge, it's the same thing. You just get at it like this. Give it a nice little sound like that, and you can see. It comes. Right off. There we go. Almost. So that's a little trick 
for those of you that are new to fiberglassing, um, yeah, look at that. Nice clean edge. I'm going to keep sanding this. Uh, and then I'm just going to put another layer of epoxy on here. I don't think I really have to show you that. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to uh, give this a light sand, uh, probably with some 600 uh, grit sandpaper, just really lightly. Just uh, I just have a little block that's on a piece of foam. I'm going to rub it down really lightly. Uh, I'm going to keep this tape here, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of epoxy on here and scrape it exactly the same way I just did and absorb all the excess again with um, a piece of paper towel. What that's going to do, it's just going to fill the weave that we have in this cloth. I don't know if the light can show you, but there's a, there's a bit of a weave going on there, but that is just the cloth. And now all we want to do is we, we just want to fill that. So two more applications of epoxy, and I want to do that tonight uh, before I go to bed. That way in the morning I can wake up, uh, and before I head off to work, I can uh, probably fiberglass the other side. Uh, then tomorrow night do uh, a layer on the top also. That way, uh, you know, we keep moving. It takes quite a while for some of this epoxy to dry. So um, I'm going to do that, and uh, we'll see how everything looks tomorrow morning. Hey, it is Saturday morning. It's a beautiful day out. It's about uh, 9.30 in the morning. You can see I'm here at the flying field. And uh, I brought along the Ibis. Here it is. I brought the wing. There's the, uh, there's the center section. It's kind of hard for me to see. There's the center section. Uh, that was repaired. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, even with all the scars on it. Uh, I'm going to paint it, but uh, I want to do this thing a little bit of a test flight. I want to give it a little bit of a test flight, see how everything goes here today. I'm at the Chinook Winds Field here in uh, High River, Alberta. Uh, this is uh, the new club that I belong to, Chinook Winds. Uh, let's uh, put this thing together, see how it goes. All right, so the Ibis is put together. It looks pretty good. It's 3.1 meters. Uh, it's a really fun airplane to fly. Oh yeah, I have my Tim Hortons coffee. I live in Canada. This is a this is a must. This is a must at the flying field, Tim Hortons. Um, it's uh, yeah, 3.3.1 meters. It's a great flying airplane. We're ready to go. Uh, the sky's a little overcast, but uh, it looks like it's going to clear up. And uh, we have a little bit of a wind. I don't know if you can see the windsock there, or the flag um, uh, coming from by the looks of it from the south somewhere. Um, hopefully. Uh, we get some flights in before the wind comes up. Uh, there's a tendency at this flying field for the wind to come up at around noon uh, really heavy, but I'm in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, so we're going to try out a new dynamic soaring site this afternoon. Uh, we have the car packed and loaded with a whole bunch of other airplanes. Uh, hopefully that works out. Um, I'm going to get out on the flight line and make this happen. The repair, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna arm this thing. Awesome, we'll see how it goes. is the Ibis, it flies again. Just to go to show you that a little bit of work over a week's worth of time and uh, you have a piece of trash 
that's ready for the air again. We'll check you out next time. Don't forget to subscribe on Facebook to RC Soaring Diaries and on YouTube. We'll talk to you next time. See you later. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Thanks, man.